Okay, I decided to make a track that's not in my usual style. And I thought I would record the process. This time I'm not going to worry about the quality, the sound quality of the, I mean, the mix down of the track because uh, I'm probably going to be lying down in bed with my laptop and a pair of headphones so I'm not going to be doing this the normal way I would usually do it because I'm a little bit sick so maybe the mix down will come after but I want to record some ideas that I have so I thought that would be interesting uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to record a 303 pattern I do have a Roland TB3 and I do have the plugin from D16 so I do have other than this Zoxbox but I wanted a dirtier sound. I want I wanted to have noise in the recording because this thing is a bit noisy if you turn up the volume. And that's something I would really like in this track to be a little bit dirty, to be a little bit unsynced. And I did tune it before I started recording but it's probably not precision perfect probably off a few semitones so I really want that loose feeling in this track so I'm just going to record this sequence uh, I usually don't use this one for recording because like I said uh, I usually want less noise but I do often use it to have fun so I do have 16 patterns here that I never used so I just chose number 7 so who knows if it's going to be right for this track but this is all about experimentation this track so uh, the bass line is going to be uh, mostly in the key of E but it has a transition to G so it's relatively simple and it's going to be a square wave so I'm just going to press record and then we'll move on to the next part I'm just going to record a few bars because like I said this is an analog synth and the oscillator doesn't re-trigger on the same spot every time so if I leave it for 16 bars it's going to sound differently if you listen to it on the first bar or the 16th bar it's not going to be a huge difference but it's going to be subtle so that's what I'm going for in this track I think I'm going to leave it running for about 64 bars and then I'm going to just export it to my laptop and continue work there. I decided to record some more audio before I even start working on anything on the computer. I've been having this instrument for I don't know 10 plus years and I never used it and um, I was looking at it and I got a cool little idea about uh, using it uh, for a shaker but in a different kind of way I will record uh, a couple of bars of solid uh, uh, solid sound so not shaking it but uh, 
making it uh, sound kind of uh, it will sound uh, it will sound like like it's raining because I think it's called something like that uh, a rain stick or whatever you can make it sound like it's raining and then when I record it I will use a gator or something like that to gradually during the song make it into a shaker so it's going to be a slow movement towards a rhythmic feel instead of a constant sound so okay I'm just going to record some a couple of bars of it and then I'm going to move on to the next sound I'll probably just move it around Yeah, it's going to be a bit harder to make it a constant sound with me holding one can on the instrument and the other one on the phone so I'm just going to stop recording it and just uh, use both hands to record this sound okay now that I have everything imported uh, we can start working on it I have the baseline here have the rain stick okay and I have some percussions I made in S layer they're just random sounds I really liked so I was just pressing random with the samples I put into it I decided not to use the conventional sounds, no, no crashes, no claps, no hi-hats, just random sounds and see what, it, what I come up in the end. So this is just experimenting and practicing. So let's hear the sounds. So those are the sounds I'm going to work with, uh, also probably a kick drum because these are all going to be percussions and I'm just going to probably add a kick drum for the percussions as well and I think that's going to be it. Now uh, I'm going to move on to the shaker. So I'm just going to drop it in here. Uh, like I said, this shaker, for this shaker I need a continuous sound and we uh, see dropouts, we don't even have to play it, we see that, I, uh, that, that here I didn't play it very well and it didn't make any sound, so uh, there's a way to fix that, I'm just going to raise the volume up a bit. So I can see clearly what we're doing, maybe some real estate, I don't need this, so I'm just going to turn off the grid and command, <coughs> command E the parts I like and com combine with the other parts I like. and then just cross fade between them delete what i don't want, don't need i just need to switch the range in here this is not a precision uh, job i just want uh, a good enough results it doesn't have to be perfect because there are a couple of steps 
after this so there's time to fix everything and like I said this is just an experiment so it doesn't have to be perfect This is too loud, so I'm going to go to this part. actually don't think I need uh, more I think this is going to be good enough I'm just going to select all of it and command J to consolidate it I'm just going to drop it into the clip and I'm going to put it into this granulator I just put in a MIDI note so it plays so I'm probably not going to explain this very well, but let's go. When I press play, it plays this part of the sample. By moving the file position, it moves the playhead. Spray uh, makes, a, I think, a couple of different ones at different uh, times. I think this is the range and the grain size I think the amount of playheads I don't know maybe but by moving the playhead we get a different result each time we get a randomness factor and that's what I want because this sound is going to be played for five or so minutes so I think the sound is going to go through the whole track and I can't have it uh, boring. Uh, it, needs, it needs to change all the time. So I'm going to add a LFO which is going to control the file position but I don't want it touching the ends so the this point and this point because if it goes to this point some of the playheads will go outside of the boundaries and play silence and we don't want silence so I'm just going to uh, turn the depth down and we're going to pull the rate really really slowly so it's scrubbing through the samples really slow and let's hear what we got I think so now we're having this different playhead playing at different points in time playing I think this is just randomness but we still have the rain effect so I'm really liking it this is just too fast Okay, uh, for the next part I'm just going to record this sample playing 
Uh, I'm going to decide now. For, let's say this track is going to be long for long, uh, let's say, 5 minutes and 30 seconds or so. So I'm going to record 5 minutes and 30 seconds of this sound. And from the start to finish it probably isn't ever going to sound the same. So that was the whole point. So I'm just going to skip this part of me of me recording it so you don't have to listen to 5 minutes of uh of a random rain stick. You're going to hear it often enough in this during this video. I'm just going to press record resampling here and just oh yeah one yeah, one more thing uh i'm going to add uh eq8 as you can see here maybe you can't hear it if you're on um, <coughs> headphones cheap headphones or something like that or monitors don't, don't have a, a lot of low end but uh, as you can see here there is a lot of, lot of unnecessary low end and I'm just going to cut it out because we don't need this in this sound. So yeah, that's it. I'm now just going to let it record for 5 minutes and 30 seconds and then we're going to move on with something else. Now let's finally see did I succeed in my plan of making this rain stick morph into a shaker i'm going to add dynamo it's a discontinued plugin from sine wipes now it's called inertia if you're on windows you can use stormgate it's free so let's play this and see okay this is the original i'm going to shorten the bar length and I'm going to make a pattern with it So now I have a continual sound, but if I go up, it will slowly morph into a shaker pattern. As you can as you can hear every shaker is different you can play around with the settings Okay, that's it. I'm just going to compress the sound a bit, as you can see. I do want it dynamic, but not as much. So I'm just going to level it, level it out a bit. Port 1, I think.
So I don't want anything over zero. I'm just going to put a limiter on it. So I will still have some dynamics, so it's almost at some point 9 dB, but it's much more controlled. I will turn off the dynamo. I will freeze the track with the limiter and the compressor. Uh, and then I will flatten it so I'm not using CPU. Unfreeze it. Now I can delete these two and just drop this back in and we still have dynamics but it's not so crazy so my percussions are usually this color so Okay, uh, I will just now add a kick drum. As I said, I'm doing this on headphones and I'm not really worried about uh, the actual sound. Is it going to be picture perfect? Is it going to be releasable or anything like that? I'm just making music and not caring just experimenting so uh the baseline is in the key of g i'm going to uh in the key of e and i think i'm going to go with the uh, kick drum also in the key of e so when you under i think f1 uh the the bassism plugin starts to act like uh starts playing the note indicated i think under f1 it's going to start uh dropping down in pitch Yeah, I think it's going to be here, somewhere around here. Let's check it out with the bass line. I'm going to turn off warp because it probably didn't sync up properly. As you can see, the first one isn't good. Okay, to turn on warp again, 16, 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to start with this note. I, I really don't know if this is the first one in the in the sequence, but like I said, this is experimenting, so who cares? rain stick is a bit too much in the middle for, for my taste so I'm going to make a small change to the simple de delay plugin and make a hoss effect so drive it up to 100% turn off sync and let's go into time one is going to be at the lowest and let's say 
the second one is going to be a 10 milliseconds so this is going to give us a nice wide shaper And now I'm going to make something that's going to make my life easier later. I'm going to group this two effects and I'm going to map some of their uh, settings to the macros. So immediately when I click on the channel, I know that I'm, I want to change something and I'd go into the plugin and figure out what I want to change later. So I know I want to change the effect depth. So this is going to be dry wet. So this is dry wet. And I think this is the envelope, is it? Yeah, envelope time. Going to map it so rename and I know that I'm going to maybe change the stereo width so I'm going to map this to the here so it's going to be stereo but I don't want this to go crazy and go over let's say 15 milliseconds or something like that so I'm going to map it to 15 so well, you it, it can't go over 15 uh, here it's mono here it's 15 milliseconds so let's try <laughs> I think I will reverse this one because it's kind of working opposite the way I want it to work so yeah that's it so rename it always name your stuff it's going to save you a lot of trouble later when you go back into the project and you can now save this as a rack and you can always have it in any of your tracks so really fast really simple easy